I think it, I think it'd be worth stopping for a second and uh, talking a little bit about Brother Rodrigo's um, talk last night. Uh, huge progress, right? Huge progress. But what I want to do is I'm going to show the ending later. How he ended a little too abruptly, right? Yeah, end fast, <laughs> but maybe maybe not that fast. It might have been my fault. And I think there was a very good effort last night on the Holy Hour by Brother Rodrigo to use analogy. And I think if it helped, it, I'm, I'm going to analyze it very, very quick. You can agree or disagree, but it, and it'll show you how analogy can really help you. Um, the, basic the basic archetype of the story was the day after I got my driver's license. And I am the greatest driver in the world. You know, Everybody knows. A kid can tell you, oh, something bad is going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. It's funny, isn't it? You just knew, oh, boy, it's not, it's not going to end well. That day is <laughs> not going to end well. And then you find out his mother, he's driving his mother, you go, oh, this is going to be really bad. <laughs> See, it's funny, isn't it? Be why? Why? Because it's archetypal. Not because you have the proportions right, but because the proportion is archetypal. And again, this is what fascinates me, that a young kid already knows where this is going. That's why they sit up. What happened? Mom was there. Oh, boy, this is bad. This is bad. This is not going to be good. So that was the archetypal story. It drew us in. And I told Brother this morning that when he said his mom, he said very quick, so he didn't pick it up. A lot of people would not have picked up that his mom was beside him in the car. So you lose a bit of context. And a trick I told him is, you know, if there's a key word like that that people have to understand, repeat it again. Say, my mom, my mom, my dear mom, <laughs> see? You hear great um, speakers, when they do that, and you're wondering, what are they doing? They're trying to burn that concept into your mind, see? And it's very pleasing, because it gives people time, oh, the mom, oh, the mom, oh, <laughs> this is going to be really bad, right? You want people to say, this is bad. And another word he was using, um, and he did it better, he, you turn to go up a hill. Right again. The hill is a critical word there to give the thing more emotion. To give it, that's the force of antagonism. So you have to say a hill going up, up a hill. You see, it's very pleasing. And this is not just for let's say people that are learning uh, a language, but they're also for people that are English speakers. So figure out your two key words, your key concepts, and repeat them. Very, very, very pleasing. However. The archetype was a little different. The story, the story archetype was the day after I got my license. But really, the analogy was something like, uh, do what your mother tells you, story. See, so there's two things going on. And sometimes it's good to break it down. And both, both can exist. And we'll see in Harry Potter, they, they exist. Different level, not only different levels, different analogies. But it's good to break it down in your mind and form your mind. Why? Because don't forget, the brain is something, I'm not an expert, but as you, if you make an effort to do these things, it forms wires. Wires connect faster, something like this. The electricity moves faster in your brain. When you start out first, you're really, it's really hard, and you go, well, why, why waste my time? But if you form the habit, there are, in fact, two, two archetypes running here. One archetype is the one that he chose, do what your mother taught tells you, right? The mom, he's gone up the hill and he can't move. Uh, he, he freezes. His car's behind him beeping. He says to his mom, Mom, you drive. And she goes, no, you drive. But do what I tell you. And at that moment, it was funny when we were preparing it because I said, well, you don't have the right gospel passage, brother. He said to me, Cana. I go, now we're talking. See? See how it just clicked right in when Mary turns and says, do what he tells you. And we're talking now about sort of what's going on behind the scenes in analogy. Then once you get that right, you can then unpack it. So you, you can actually then give the homily at any way you want, but you now have something. And not only that, what's powerful about analogy, you can keep that, and you could give that as a homily 30, 40 times, and people would love it, right? So when you get analogy right, store it, right? And you don't have to store it with, the, with your perfect 
perfectly uh, flow of your homily. Just get the analogy. Write it down real quick. You know, five, six lines, and store them because they'll be very valuable when you have to preach or give a talk to kids about Cana. Or you suddenly are out there in a retreat, and they say, oh, get up there and talk to the kids. And you go, what am I talking about? Pull your Cana story. Pull your mother and Cana story, see? Recycling is essential, especially with analogies, because it takes so much work to make them, to get them to work, right? So again, you see the archetype. And here we see, as we will see in Harry Potter, that um, we will see that uh, she's actually running a lot of archetypes at the same time. Just one, e one funny little thing that I thought was the, a bit my mistake. Find the best driver that you can find around. That was my, my answer to my mom's question. Now, see, mom, he said it, but he said it very quick. See that? You said, mom, you did say it, but it's too quick. We didn't have time to imagine mom sitting beside me in the, in the uh, passenger seat. But I want you to look at the end. A little too abrupt. A little too abrupt, because, and it's probably my fault, because I always say end, right? What I mean is, don't take off again, and take off again, and take off again. But it's not, ink, ding. <laughs> so we're like, even those that were sleeping were like, something happened. Right? So the, the, the metaphor, the analogy to help you know how to end is called a slow curtain close. Because you're lowering your voice and you're slowing it down. So in the time it takes you to, for a curtain in a theater to come down, that's what you do. Slow down your voice, you know, no new thought, and say, well, now we're here in front of the Eucharist. That's whatever. Okay, any questions, any comments? Oh, by the way, if you're listening on YouTube and you'd like to help Brother Rodrigo or encourage him, <laughs> his, his Eucharistic Hour is up on YouTube, and you can leave all the comments you want, <laughs> giving him suggestions. And remember, he's just learning English, so a real very brave of all these brothers that have to get out there and just do it. And then the last thing, too, when you give a, a Eucharistic Hour, risk it. Go try things. Nothing happens. All that's going to happen is that your little sister laughs at you. But there's, that's all. There's nothing. <laughs> going to be nothing worse than that. Now is the time in the seminary to try things. Push yourself. Try it. Some will work and some will not. Okay, well then, any comments?